What up, Hyper Change? Welcome to another episode. Great to be back. Today, we're talking about Amazon and the potential acquisition of Whole Foods. Now, we made a Moonshot Monday pitching the idea three months ago. Jeff Bezos has been an early subscriber, so thanks for watching and thanks for actually listening to our idea. Now, Amazon has officially put out a bid for Whole Foods for $42 a share. This is huge news. It is justifiably rattling the entire retail sector. But before we talk about why this deal is going to kill retail, let's talk about why it was such a brilliant move for Amazon. First of all, it was clear the company wanted to get into brick and mortar ever since they announced Amazon Books, their physical bookstore, and they have been expanding those pretty quickly. They already have 13 locations either open now or coming soon. Then in late 2016, the company unveiled its Just Walk Out technology via a crazy YouTube video. Basically what that means is you could go into a store, do all your shopping, Amazon sensors, and the eye in the sky would figure out exactly what you bought, charge you when you just walked out so you never need to wait in line again. This is a huge deal for retail um, of all sorts, not even just grocery, but I, it, it's, it's just massively disruptive. And so from that moment on, it was clear that Amazon was looking at grocery. And then if you also look at the fact that Amazon has had very, very little success in online grocery, like they've tried Amazon Fresh, they have like Amazon Pantry, all this stuff, but it's really difficult to get consumers to shop for food online. The reason why my kind of analogy for this is that a ripe banana to me is different than a ripe banana to you. So translating the experience of shopping in the produce aisle of a grocery store is really tricky to replicate online. So that's kind of a microcosm of why it's so difficult to get these food sales up as a bigger portion of online sales. So Amazon threw up the white flag and was like, all right, consumers are going to buy produce in stores. We're going to need to build a ton of grocery stores, but wait, if we're going to need to build 500 stores, why are we going to do it right next to Whole Foods and compete with them for 10 years? Screw that. We can buy them. Why does it make sense to buy them now? Because we have 20 billion in cash. They're only trading for 13.4. The company's earnings are cyclically depressed because Kroger's, Costco, and everybody is competing with them on price, coming out with organics, the business is struggling. Even then, they're trading at a really cheap 16, or they were trading like a 12 times multiple on those depressed earnings. Amazon bought them out for less than 16 times operating income, about 0.85 times sales. I think this is gonna be a huge steal. All of a sudden, Whole Foods goes from having a business that's with everything wrong about it to having a business with everything right about it. Their biggest competitor, Amazon, is now out of the equation. The Just Walk Out technology is a huge deal and competitive advantage. Not only is it going to mean that consumers and shoppers are way more happy to go to Whole Foods because we don't have to wait in line, but it's going to drop money to the bottom line. Labor is a huge piece of the cost of the grocery equation. If I don't have to pay my cashiers and I can have software instead, that's going to be way cheaper in the long run. That's going to mean either Amazon has room to boost the profits of Whole Foods, which is not going to happen, or dramatically lower the prices, which is going to happen. The classic Amazon approach is we're going to make this an even more profitable business and pass on those savings to the customer because we love the customer and Walmart, Costco, Kroger, Target, everybody who's trying to compete on organic is going to be totally screwed. And this is an even bigger question and, and more fascinating piece of the equation is that Amazon isn't required to make a profit. Whole Foods, much like every other grocery player that I've been mentioning, has the expect has created the shareholder expectations where they need to have a consistent profit, they need to be paying a consistent dividend. That is really hard to keep up, especially when you're competing with a company like Amazon, which doesn't have to pay a consistent dividend and which doesn't have to show any profits because its shareholders have faith in Jeff Bezos' execution. Now the Whole Foods has a massive competitive advantage because they have Just Walk Out technology and they don't need to make a profit so they can charge even lower prices, which leads to another competitive advantage, which means they're going to go even more, take even more market share. That's huge. The third thing on top of this that I think permeates every angle of where uh, Whole Foods is business is Amazon is really just a data company when you get down to it. They're going to be making every decision from what products to stock at Whole Foods like it was its online store and they're going to do it so much better than Whole Foods. For instance, me and my homies were trying to cook up BBQ, 4th of July, classic. Of course, the grocery store knows 4th of July coming. It comes every year. They should be the expert on what sells at 4th of July. We went to buy skirt steaks. Seems like a pretty obvious item that everybody would make on 4th of July. And of course it was, so we went two days early to go right into Whole Foods and like th at 3 p.m. to get our steaks. What happens? They're sold out for the day, two days ahead of time. We go to the next day, we go to Italy at 10 in the morning, a different grocery store. Luckily, they had two skirt steaks left. The butcher there told us that if we had come in any later, we wouldn't 
have gotten them. There was a guy who was there 30 minutes before us at 9.30 in the morning, insane, and he bought every other skirt steak except for the last two that we bought. So like, this is just a microcosm of why these grocery companies aren't really good at using data. They're not maximizing the efficiency of the stores. That skirt steak microcosm is gonna translate to every other SKU, and Amazon is gonna be so much more streamlined and operationally efficient than Whole Foods is today or than any other grocery store currently is that I think that's also gonna make a huge difference on why they're such an edge at operating. On top of that as well, now Amazon has 500 stores located in densely populated urban areas right next to the rising tide of the wealthy millennium consumer. What are they gonna do with them? Streamline the stores, probably squeeze less inventory there for what's in the store and also have more inventory for what people are buying online so they can get you even faster delivery and leverage that store network as delivery hubs. It's gonna go down as an incredible acquisition and I am just, like it happened, we called it three months ago. So I'm stoked about that as well. Seeking Alpha had me on the idea of the month with their partnership with Cheddar TV, which was so dope. So shout out to Cheddar TV, shout out to Seeking Alpha for that. How, my idea of the month was Amazon's going to a trillion. So I wanted to make this video to kind of back up the math. I think they were going to a trillion before the Whole Foods acquisition. So this is just kind of a cherry on top and we'll accelerate the path there. I modeled out Amazon's financials and we know that they don't make profit. The operating income isn't a good way to value the company, but that being said, they've grown operating income for three years in a row, and I think they're gonna continue to grow operating income. I've took that into account. And they're still gonna grow str strongly in North America. They're gonna grow incredibly strong internationally. I think India is gonna become a really big piece of that. They've been investing heavily there. I think that makes a ton of sense for the long term. AWS is just a juggernaut. I believe that'll continue to dominate. So if we extrapolate these financials, the bottom line is they're scaling from 169 million billion in revenue this year. And by the way, these are slightly ahead of Wall Street's consensus forecast. So I don't know what you wanna do with that info, but. So I have them scaling to about 300, and, and this assumes they acquire Whole Foods, 325 billion in revenue by 2020. Amazon is incredibly hard to value. Unlike every other company before them, they choose not to make a profit. They're investing everything into growth, although I think that slightly might be changing and we're starting to see them become slightly like a normal profitable company. But the bottom line is you can't use normal earnings to value this company or the market's not and you're not gonna be able to make any sense of it if you do. And I, I kind of get it, or at least I think I do. And I think it makes a lot of sense because I think the market here is looking at Amazon and they're saying in the long term, we think Bezos is sacrificing profits today to build, make our moat stronger and that's gonna increase our future cash flow in the long term and therefore we're justifying sacrificing these near-term cash flows because longer term cash flows are getting bigger and that makes sense if you're a long-term shareholder and now his base is almost all long-term shareholders who believe in this philosophy and that's why there's so much support for the share price. It's in a consistent uptrend. It all makes sense when you look at it from that lens. And price sales, which may be the most accurate way to look at the company in some regards because if you wanna just gauge the size, you can gauge the revenue. That's a really rough but simple and actually effective way to look at it. And just on those numbers, this chart from Guru Focus shows they've been in a range from two to three times price sales for quite some time, the last decade minus the last recession. Um, although recently they're at the higher end of that range and I think that may even be justified. If you pull a look, take a look at the company's gross margin, it's been increasing steadily as their business shifts to more re revenue as a piece of AWS and the retail business goes to more of these third party services where they're just helping other companies fulfill orders as a platform. Those are higher gross margin businesses. So potentially it's revenue is getting more lucrative so the expansion of a price sales multiple makes sense. And you can even argue for a higher than three times price sales multiple on those 2020 sales of 324 billion valuing the company over a trillion dollars in three years. So that's one way to look at it. Another thing I look at besides price sales is price to operating cash flow. Now I think this is a very interesting metric that I don't look at for a lot of companies, but I do look at for Amazon because there's lack of earnings and because I think it's interesting to note the company puts it out always its first statistic in its financial filings. I think they're trying to tell us something with that. Hey, this is the operating cash flow we did this year. I think what they're trying to say is if we stop growing, we stop investing in infrastructure to make the future cash flows bigger, our cash flow today would have been this. And that's why I think that's a fascinating number to look at because it's basically like, all right, let's put the brakes on growth. Or how much profit do we think Amazon can generate? It was about 16.4 billion. That was the operating cash flow number in 2016, up 38%. This number has been growing much faster than revenue. But even so, as a piece of revenue, it's about 12%. This is up from 7.8% of revenue in 2014 when they did 6.4 billion in operating cash flow. But let's not even get into that. Let's just assume the operating cash flow stays about 12% of the company's total sales and 
You will also go along to assume that this is a rough estimate of what the company's earnings would be if they stop investing so heavily into growth. Now, if we take this all into equation, I'm looking at operating cash flow of 39 billion in 2020 based on 325 billion in 2020 sales and that 12% ratio. A 25 times multiple on that 39 billion in cash flow will get you to a trillion dollars. The company right now is trading for about 23 times. It's 2017 projected operating cash flow of 21 billion, or that's my estimate. Yeah, I don't know. Um, three times sales, 20 to 25 times operating cash flow are multiples that Amazon has traded at consistently. And I think it's reasonable to assume those will continue if the market keeps the same faith in its business. And therefore, I think if you extrapolate the growth in those pretty conservatively, you'll see why a lot of people are arriving to that $1 trillion valuation number in the next three to four years. It just kind of makes sense if you're extrapolating what's happening now. But that being said, that doesn't get us over the equation of if you look at my operating income, Amazon is only projected to make 14 billion in 2020 or 13.7. So the multiple on that would be about 73 times operating earnings to be a trillion dollar market cap. Um, and that's based on 2020. So that looks really expensive. So if the market says, screw this old methodology, we just want to look at operating earnings. We're gonna give this a 10, a 20 times ratio. Cause we don't even think Amazon's growing that fast anymore. Then yeah, the downside will get real and this won't work. So I, even, that's so I'm still bullish on Amazon because I think it'll everything will continue and I think when it's worth a trillion everyone's going to be talking about how it's going to be worth two trillion and that's why it doesn't matter that the earnings are what they are now and I just think that's going to continue and I think in the long run in a decade or two this will be well over a trillion this will be a several trillion dollar company but we can get into that later and the growth like there's so many reasons and tailwinds behind the AWS, behind the Alexa business, behind retail, behind what they're doing with drones, behind what they now are gonna do with Whole Foods, the turbocharged physical retail, the Jeff Bezos' next scheme, his next seven schemes that he hasn't even schemed up are probably each worth a trillion, add those onto the market, you know, I don't know. Point is, you have an incredible leader, you have an incredible business, I think the valuation to a trillion makes sense in 2020. That's in about three years. Scott Galloway, an NYU professor, we've shared some of his stuff before. I'm gonna put links to his talks. He also has this thesis. To wrap it up, I wanna say, this is one of the most fascinating experiments in all of capitalism. Amazon, we've never had a company at this scale forego profits for so long, yet have so much success and yet have so much faith from the market. Like when will this, when will Amazon, if ever, be valued by traditional metrics? Or maybe will every company never be valued by traditional metrics again? And we're in a new era of finance that values earnings power and what that could be in 10 years versus earnings now. And the traditional model of analyzing last quarter statements and extrapolating is, I don't know, like we're in a new era of no, and and the, the, the most ironic thing is Amazon's the only one in that era and they're competing with Walmart and Costco and companies through this acquisition of Whole Foods that are just like, stuck to this legacy model of profit of profitability that Amazon's not adherent to and that is a massive inherent like arbitrage in their business model that is not going to go away anytime soon that makes me think there is no question Amazon will dominate the entire retail industry with this acquisition especially starting in grocery let me know what you think comment question subscribe if you haven't already like we're coming out with so much more awesome stuff that's hyper change see you guys soon peace